Welcome to Kadena, Sinking Sorcerer. As far as our opening hand goes, yeah, we're going to keep on this one. I like it. We'll at least be able to find a green source uh, with that Pluto Delta. And we've got some really nice, uh, really good utility creatures in the hand. Seedborn Muse and uh, Shapeshifter and then also Beast Whisper. So... Uh, I will definitely take this. So let's go lead off with Pluto Delta. Uh, let's go ahead and crack Pluto Delta. Grab ourselves a breeding pool. That way I don't forget about it. There we go. Have that come into play tapped. And then anything else, we're going to go ahead and pass the turn over to our opponent. We are playing Kadena. Sinking Sorcerer. So the first down, uh, the first face down creature you cast each turn costs three less to cast, which is basically going to be free, which is a uh, very nice feeling. Let's go and go for Underground Sea, and then uh, kick it back over there. So then also whatever a face down creature you uh, face down creature enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. So uh, I've been doing a lot of play testing with Kadena. Unfortunately, I haven't been play testing or at least practicing reading the word text <laughs> while I'm doing the game. So if you kind of felt like uh, Jolt rolled through the stop sign on reading that one. I, I most certainly did. It sounded a lot like it. So uh, I was going to lead off with Swamp and uh, anything else we could. Yeah, let's just wait for Kadena. I think that'll be pretty good. So uh, going past turn. Plank, it's the Mimeoplasm, everybody's favorite 1960s horror monster. Um, as the Mimeoplasm enters the battlefield, you may exile two creature cards in graveyard, which also includes our graveyard. Um, if you do, it enters the battlefield as a copy of one of the cards, and then it gets plus one counters equal to the other card that is exiled. So going to see a Lightning Grease come down. Let's go for Urborg. Um, normally, you would be scared of Lightning Grease in a Mimeoplasm deck, but we haven't seen any green from them, and they don't really have a graveyard going, so uh, I will most certainly take this. Now, we could be a little bit cute, and if we end up going for Beast Whisper and then Kadeen, yeah, I think I kind of like going for, well, no, excuse me, we don't have double green. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to go for that, but we can't do that. So we're going to go, uh, there we go. We're going to go for Kadena. Uh, basically, the line of play I was going to go for is we're going to go for Beast Whisper, and then next turn go for Kadena, uh, get that card draw from Beast Whisper, then cast a free spell, get the card draw from Beast Whisper, and also get the card draw from Kadena, and uh, kind of roll out from there. But this, I'm glad we have Beast Whisper in the hand, because this is pretty much what we, uh, oh, hostage taker. Okay, that's going to get it. Um, but, you know, just having a 2-3 on the battlefield is not the worst thing in the world. Then hopefully we run into lane. If we don't run into lane, we still have Chromatic Lantern or even something like Wilderness Reclamation. So I don't feel pretty good. So um, yeah, let's just go ahead and go for that. Let's go for uh, Chromatic Lantern because that'll make sure we can at least go for like double Beast Whisper if we need to do anything like that. And then uh, anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn over to our opponent. So we did cover both commanders. This is officially... Uh, Advertisement time. Let's give a shout out to our sponsors, MTGO Traders. If you want to build your very own morph deck and scare your opponents because they don't know what's on your side of the battlefield, hey, head on over there. They've got a ton of face down creatures for you to choose from over at MTGO Traders. And oh, Demonic Tutor. I'm um, actually uh, pretty tempted to go for Demonic Tutor on Cultivate. Just want to get ahead on lands as quickly as possible. So. Because that'll be the land drop and making up for last turn. So yeah, let's go and do that. So we're going to go Demonic Tutor because, you know, most of the time what we would be grabbing with Demonic Tutor is something like Beast Whisper or Wilderness Reclamation. So just to kind of rip into it and uh, get ahead on land drops, I kind of like that. So I'll grab Kodama's Reachers, go for green. And so just in case something does happen to our uh, Chromatic Lantern, we're probably going to grab this one. Yeah, we'll split this one down the middle. Not down the middle, just basically grab nothing but four. So we'll have that four center of the battlefield. Let's go for one more forest and then pass the turn back over to our opponent. But yeah, check out MTGO Traders. Also, let's give a quick shout out to InkGaming.com. You can check out my merch booth over there. Go to the website, type in Jolt539 in the search bar or use coupon code Jolt to get 10% off anything off the website. So if you've not treated yourself in a while, uh, make sure you treat yourself. And last but not least, I started a Patreon. So if you'd like to contribute to that, there's a link down in the description below. Get your name at the beginning with the ending in the credits. And if you can't do that, hey, tell somebody about the channel. I would appreciate that. So there we go. Now it's officially free time. We can have some fun. Yeah, let's go for this Beast Whisper line of play. Uh, if our opponent has counter magic, they're definitely going to stop Beast Whisper. And I just like going for this. We can get this down. That does potentially allow us to go for Kadena next turn. Uh, still keeps us open on Hero's Downfall if we need to end up going for that. Um, we're also in a spot to where we have Seaborn Muse and Wilderness Reclamation. So that's really going to allow us to generate a pretty good chunk of mana uh, once we get some stuff going. So... Hopefully our oh, opponent finally runs into a force. I just saw in the chat where they said, this is crazy. So I'm glad that they finally run into a force. There we go. Uh, I know that feeling of just very quickly uh, cracking a, a land to get that colored source that you need very, very badly. So, and uh, we'll talk about Kadena here in a second. So let's get, uh, yeah, let's go for, I like going for this. So let's go Kadena and it's going to be Sultai Colors. Okay, uh, we're going to get an extra card draw from Beast Whisper. Ooh, Temple of Malady. Uh, we're going to have Kadena enter the battlefield. Let's go for the Scry of the Scurry, the Fever. 
the insanity prismatic vista is a little too insane right now so let's go put that on the bottom and we get one free morph this turn so i'm thinking i guess yeah we could actually have a shapeshifter enter the battle for a copy of beast whisper yeah that the oh, whole sounds pretty good all right so we're gonna cast this for free and look at this value this is the value train this to me we've already won in the deck we have beast whisper on the battlefield we have kadena and we're getting two card draw from just casting a free creature and uh, that is an amazing feeling so um anything else we're gonna go and pass the turn i think at this point i actually do like alchemist refuge so let's just go and drop a dream chisel and i will go and pass turn over our opponent so we do have a morph creature. We have a Vesuvian Shapeshifter. So what we are going to be able to do is go for that two mana to have it uh, basically flip and become a copy of any creature. I'm probably going to have that become a copy of Beast Whisperer because that's basically going to be three card draw. We're going to get our free Ancestral Vision um, off of just casting uh, Vigilante, <laughs> which is going to feel pretty good. Or we can go for a thousand wins. Um, but outside of the deck, you know... This is pretty much what we want to be doing. We're just getting as much value as possible by casting these free creatures. And the way we're going to close it out is we're running stuff like Overrun. Uh, we do have Thunderfoot Bailoth in here that really works out well. You know, we pretty much need this deck to function with Kadena on the battlefield. So uh, Thunderfoot Bailoth is definitely one of those cards that allows us to kind of really push a, an aggressive game plan on there. It's going to give all of our most morph tokens that plus two i think plus two i can't remember exactly what the bonus is and oh no they're gonna steal oh they're gonna steal beast whisper okay we can live with that and if we end up so we have the morph creature become a copy of it and but we can't stop it and i was hoping we could do something in response to that so that's not going to get rid of it so uh, that's going to keep hostage taker on the battlefield there's nothing in the graveyard right now for the mimeoplasm um and i think if we morph the creature yeah, I think we're going to be able to get around that Beast Whisper Clause of targeting by simply just morphing the morph token. So I think that's going to work. So I run into the Temple of Deceit. In fact, let's go ahead and go for the uh, the morph creature. And we're going to have it become a copy of Beast Whisper. And the way this works is because it doesn't target. It doesn't target Beast Whisper on that side. So we still get our free target spell. Um, we have a free spell to cast for the turn. It's going to be 1,000 wins. Um, I think that sounds... We also... Ooh, we do want to try to get down Seedborn Muse, if at all possible. So let's go for Alchemist Refuge for the land drop for the turn. Let's go Seedborn Muse. That's going to allow us to cash in an additional card draw. Ooh, Worldly Tutor, that's good. Uh, so we have Seedborn Muse into the battlefield. We're going to get our free uh, spell. Let's go for um, the Vigilante. That's going to allow us to cash in uh, one more card draw. Draw to Cultivate. And yeah, let's go and go Worldly Tutor. That way we at least have the creature that we do need uh, with Kadena. So let's get this popped out. And I think at this point, we could try to go for something that would kind of keep the value going. We could go for this Thunderfoot Bailoff. That's going to give everybody plus two, plus two. I think I kind of do like going for the counter one. Where are we? Target instant or sorcery. There we go. Let's grab the Spell Snatcher. I think that'd be a good option for us. We can get that down, not have to worry about it. We can flash it in next turn and also cast a lot more stuff. And we'll really see the power of this deck uh, once we pass the turn over to our opponent. So uh, we're going to draw into that one card. Okay, so we've run into Spell Snatcher and then anything else. We're, yeah, we're just kind of in a world of two threes, so there's <laughs> it's not a lot of fun combat. Uh, we do want to hold on to Kadena, so we're not going to swing in. So then anything else, uh, no, we're going to go and pass the turn. Now, we will have this Alchemist Refuge. Um, that's going to allow us to kind of flash in some stuff. So that does allow us to at least go for a free spell uh, with our commander. That's going to be a little bit of extra card draw between our commander and Beast Whisper. We're also looking at Cultivate, Heroes Downfall, if we need to keep ourselves open. So uh, we've got some pretty good options and, th and that's the other cool thing about this deck is when you incorporate the flash element um just getting that free spell when you have anything free that's magic and you can highlight on that free part of magic by you know just kind of doubling up with beast whisperer getting a card draw off of a free spell it just really allows you to uh, just kind of dig really deep into your library now as far as the actual deck itself you know a lot of this morph stuff is it's not the best out there some of these morph creatures are very very clunky but um 
I don't know. There's just a lot of times where um, that's kind of why I'm incorporating stuff like Overrun and Thunderfoot Baylock because, you know, you just want to basically just get that card draw flowing. You want to be able to cast a bunch of free stuff, get a lot of creatures down, and just really just kind of uh, build up a really nice board state and try to close it out. Now, I actually don't have Crater Hoof in here. I might end up adding it. Um, this is definitely one of those decks. Oh, do we want to? Yeah, let's go for this. So we're going to go for uh, Alchemist Refuge. It's going to be green and then blue. So we can cast spells as though they do not have flash. Let's go and flash in spell snatcher. Yeah, because we don't really want to fight around. Uh, I don't. We just don't want to fight around Glenna Linda. So that's going to allow us to cash an additional card draw. Triumph. Ooh, there we go. Now we're really getting somewhere. I go for an additional card draw, and let's go ahead and because we yeah we need this to stick around. So we're going to go and counter that spell. And then we can actually cast it without paying its mana cost, I think, if that's correct. Is that right? Yeah, so we can actually just flash this in. That's going to be a 2-2. Two, two. Oh, this is... <laughs> Look at that value. That is some very lovely value. Now, next turn, we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, actually, that's going to be just enough for Overrun and Triumph of the Horde. Normally, I'm not a huge fan of Infect and Commander, but in a deck like this where we're just trying to get as many bodies on the battlefield, um, running Triumph of the Horde really helps us just kind of close some of these sticky games out, uh, just like this. You know, our opponent appears to be playing a little bit more of a uh, kind of go-wide version of Mimeoplasm with a bunch of creatures, so it's nice to be able to at least put a ton of pressure like that. So we may turn this face down. We're just going to leave it up as a 2-3. I think that's going to be perfectly fine right now. Now, I want to keep it as a Beast Whisperer. And then Ley Line of Anticipation. So um, let's go for our free spell for the turn. That's going to be 1,000 wins. We're just going to go and cast that face down. Draw into a land that's going to at least come into play untapped. We get another card draw with Kadena. There we go, Damnation. So let's go uh, Swamp. Let's go for... Yeah, we don't really need to flip anything up at this point right now. So let's go for Overrun. It's going to give all our creatures plus, and then let's go for Triumph of the Hordes. Oh, yeah, this is just wonderful. Um, if our opponent sees this video, hey, sorry about closing it out with Infect. There's just sometimes that uh, when you get a lot of creatures down, you got to do what you can do about it. And so we're going to go ahead and push in. They're going to be able to block with these creatures, but we've got 6-6s, six 7-7s, sixes, 6-8s. Seven seven, six uh, we're definitely going to be able to push past our opponent on this one with the Infect. So uh, this is pretty much textbook what we want to happen in the deck, uh, being able to get free 38 points of Infect damage. Hey, shout out to our opponent for sticking this one out. Uh, they were a little bit stuck on green mana, but at least we got a good showing of what our deck is trying to do. And so there we go. It'll get down something like uh, Overrun, Triumph of the Hordes. And, you know, that is a lot of mana, but uh, we're getting a lot of spells. You saw that uh, we're just filtering through our hand, our deck, really quick. Uh, we got all the way down to, like, 68 cards in our library. Opponent's sitting at 79 cards in their library. So uh, being able to just kind of amplify the card draw from casting free stuff turn it to turn is a uh, wonderful feeling. So, anyways, enjoy the video. Like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye. Welcome to Kadena, Slinking Sorcerer. As far as our opening hand goes, we've got, yeah, I think we... Yeah, we can't keep on this one. Let's go to Mulligan. I do like it, but um, yes, I like this a lot better. We have Marsh Flats. We have Soul Ring, three visits. We still have Wilderness Recreation, so we will definitely keep on this one. See what... Uh, let's go ahead and put... I think Spell Snatcher. We're just going to put that on the bottom for right now. Uh, click OK. Let's go and lead off with Marsh Flats. Let's go and crack that go for Soul Ring. There we go. Crack this bad boy. We can also go for Dream Chisel, which actually be pretty good, too, this turn. So let's go and crack Marsh Flats. Definitely want to grab a green source. So let's go and grab um, Black Green. Let's grab Bayou. Let's go for Soul Ring. There we go. Let's go for Dream Chisel. That'll be two more mana, and then we can uh, get the uh, command. Normally, we don't have this uh, clunky of a uh, opening hand, or at least we're getting this not clunky, but just kind of uh, such a mechanical opening hand where we need to do a lot of stuff. So there we go. Get down Dream Chisel. It is officially uh, commander time. Let's cover our commander. So we're playing Kadena. Uh, the first face down creature spell you cast each turn costs three less to cast. Then, whenever a face down creature enters the battlefield under your control, Draw a card. Playing against Najila, the Blade Blossom. Uh, whenever a warrior attacks, you may have its uh, you may have its creature, its controller, create a woman white warrior creature token that's tapped and attacking. Then for a Wooberg activation, untap all attacking creatures that gain trample, life link, and haste until end of turn. After this phase, there's an additional combat step. So there we go. <laughs> let's go and go for three visits. Uh, let's go and crack soul not crack soul ring. We tap down soul ring and that'll allow us to go for customs depot. So that'll be pretty good. So let's grab Tropical Island. Let's go for Customs Depot. 
and then uh, tap down for blue and uh, kick it back over there. So we did cover both commanders. Give a quick shout out to our sponsors, MTGO Traders. You know, build your very own morph deck. Head on over there. They've got all the face down creatures that you may need. Uh, you don't know what you're going to buy because they're face down. So it's kind of like a nice little surprise. So i um, just kidding. You can see what morph creatures you're going to buy. And also, if you want to check out my merch booth, head over to ingaming.com. You can type in Jolt539 in the search bar to see uh, my merch booth. Or you can actually just use coupon code Jolt to get 10% off your order off anything off the website. So if you've not treated yourself in a long time, uh, make sure you treat yourself. That would be pretty cool. So uh, let's go Underground C. Yeah, I think that sounds good. Let's go Underground C and let's go for Kadena. Now, we don't have a morph creature, but I like getting this down because that's going to allow us to hopefully just dig into some value, uh, which is going to be a very good thing. And we have enough mana for Customs Depot. So let's go ahead and pay that one mana. So we draw into Underground River. I think at this point we can actually, I want to hold on to both. So we'll just go dump Underground River. And then we'll have Kadena enter the battlefield. And hopefully we can cash in some card draw. Uh, next turn we run into uh, some sort of morph creature. So anything else past turn of our opponent. And last but not least, I started a Patreon. So if you'd like to contribute to the Patreon, there's a link down in the description below. Get your name at the beginning or the ending of the credits and help the channel out for cool content like this if you want to. And if you can't do that, hey, no problem. Just tell somebody about the channel, whether it's online or at your local gaming store. So... If you're a fan of free time, if you're a fan of talking about Commander, hey, it's officially free time. Let's have some fun. So, uh, Post is going to lead off the Commander. That's going to be an Impact Trimmer. Uh, trigger put us down to 28. And then, um, but yeah, as far as this deck, there's really nothing too crazy. I mean, the, the core concept is we just want to cash in as much card draw as possible. That's what we're going for. So let's go for Temple of Mas uh, Mystery. Let's get the Scry going, the Scurry, the Fever, the Insanity. Descent into mat. Uh, Din. Oh yeah, definitely. Put Din Protector on top, and then uh, anything else going past. Turn back over to our opponent. So, um, core concept is basically just kind of have as much overlapping value on these free morph spells as possible. So things like Customs Depot, and um, we also have Beast Whisper hanging around in the deck. If we can get it to where we have our commander down, and then we can also get some variation of like extra stuff like that, and just really start kind of uh, casting these creatures, going for as much card draw as possible, that really helps us get ahead on value, or at least kind of further our board state a lot quicker than our opponent. Um, you know, we are open to where Kadena definitely needs to be on the battlefield for us to get as much value as possible. But uh, there's just some times to where if our opponent doesn't have an answer right then and there, we can just kind of assemble this board state that is just uh, really rough. <laughs> well, kind of like it. And then also, you know, even if we're not going for a ton of morph action, uh, running stuff like Overrun, just kind of these Stampede style effects really help us. Uh, is that a Warrior tapped and attacking? Yeah, we're going to block on that Warrior token. I think we're okay with that. Get rid of that warrior. That's going to get them in for three. Puts us down to 24. And then we draw into Den Protector. So let's go and cast this for free. Cast it for face down and return a target card from your graveyard to your hand. So we don't really have anything that great right now for us to bring back. So I was going to pay one for a custom depot. <laughs> I am so close <laughs> to saying Home Depot. Um, oh, and then we've got another uh, morph card. That's going to be perfect. So um, I think at this point, I really like overrunning this one, especially if we're going to have some sort of extra creatures on the battlefield. So let's go ahead and discard Wilderness Reclamation. Um, that's going to be the morph token on the battlefield. And that also allows us to go for a Hermit, too. So let's go for the card draw. Uh, ooh, Seedborn Muse. Yeah, I still think at this point, we just go for a uh, Hermit. Yeah, I like that. That's going to be one, two... I don't think we'll still go for a filter. Yeah, let's go and go for Customs Depot. Because what we can do is we can actually set up this Den Protector really nicely. So yeah, let's go ahead and go for that. Hunted Cadaver. Haunted Cadaver. <sighs> Seaboard Muse really helps us generate a pretty good chunk of mana as far as going for these more. Yeah, I think we could just dump Hunted Cadaver. Because like I mentioned with the uh, Den Protector, that's going to allow us to bring it back. So I have that morph token enter the battlefield. And we are looking at more for uh, two... And then more for five. So there we go. We're going to cash in an additional card draw. Ooh, there we go. Make the land drop for the turn. Drown Canacomb. And then uh, anything else? No, let's go and pass the turn to our opponent. So uh, what we can end up doing is actually just leaving Den Protector up at this point. We can turn it face up and trade with our opponent's commander next turn. And that does allow us to bring back Haunted Cadaver uh, back into our hand. And so that allows us to kind of attack our opponent's hand, make them discard some cards. And, uh, you know, this is pretty much what we're going to get doing. You know, good stuff like Dream Chisel gives us a nice reduced cost to kind of cast some of these spells out. And one of the other good things, if you haven't built Kadena or if you're thinking about buying it, is just... Just having the ability to kind of flash stuff in to where you can get that free utility spell on your opponent's turn is uh, such a good feeling. Our opponent's getting some really good ramp going. They've got the uh, 
the land hands go in Kodama's Reach and Cultivate. And they're going to go for Tormenting Voice. So I think at this point, if they still decide to swing in with Najila, I think we'll probably still end up going for this Morph Off Den Protector. Because either way, we're going to need her to flip to at least bring back one creature to the hand uh, next turn. So, all right, so they're not going to swing in. Um, I think we still end up going for it. So let's go and go for the Morph. Let's bring back the uh, Haunted Cadaver. <laughs> and I love thinking about her jumping out from the forest and like... <laughs> Karate swinging this the zombie back into our hand. Thank you very much, Den Protector. I uh, certainly appreciate that. And then we run into uh, Temple of Deceit. So um, I think... Yeah, let's see if we can't make the land drop for the turn. So let's go for our free spell. Let's go cast face down. Let's go and pay one more mana. Ooh, Revelation is perfect. So uh, let's go and dump Temple of Deceit. We're going to have that creature enter the battlefield. And then we're still going to get an additional card draw from Kandina too. Anticipate, that's good. Um, so I think at this point, with us having four cards on the battlefield, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, I think we'll probably end up going for Revelation. I think that'll be the best bet, because that's going to be a pretty good chunk of card draw. Or what we can do is we can hold up Morph. Yeah, let's do this. I, I kind of like, this is a little bit more of a riskier play. If we get hit by a board wipe, we get hit by a board wipe. But um, I really like flipping hermit next turn getting those sampling tokens on the battlefield and then that also allows us to go for overrun too so yeah let's go dig a little bit deeper with uh, customs depot home depot if you're a fan of uh, home improvement and we'll go and dump hedron archive at this point so you know having something like anticipate allows us to find another creature really badly and that's pretty much what we're looking for so um, let's go and push in it's gonna be a 2-2 can't swing in with that yeah i think we're just going to swing in with the din protector It'll be pretty good. So if they want to trade, um, oh, and that's a totally new that. It was a human warrior. So we've got a human warrior token swinging in. And uh, <laughs> we're going to swing in for three, knock them down to 26, and then we'll pass the turn. So um, next turn, we're going to be at least be able to go for the morph off of uh, Hermit. Thank you, Magic Online. Magic Online really helps me out sometimes. If I miss a certain interaction and a token pops on the battlefield, I'm like, oh, oh yes totally kept that in mind so um so we have dim protector swinging in that puts them down to 26 and then we kick it back over but that's going to allow us to untap with um anticipate and also allows us to go for a couple different morphs so we've got one two three four five six seven um we're going to hold on to haunted uh, cadaver at this point because we want to attack their hand but if we can survive this turn we can go for the hermit flip we're going to get those sapling tokens that's going to be a really good revelation and allow us to go for a really nice overrun uh, just kind of depending on what sort of board state they end up developing so but hopefully they don't hit a board wipe it's a little bit more of an aggressive line of play ah oh, bummer well, you got to be risky sometimes. So I guess at this point, we can maybe dig for heroic intervention. So um, let's try our best. We could have gotten Revelation for four, but, ooh, but we can't cast that. But it'll be good for next turn. Yeah, I think that'll be good. Because it's going to be four damage to each creature without flying. Or actually, Unblinking is going to allow us to dig a little bit deeper. So let's go for that. So we're going to grab Unblinking. I'm um, still going to get rid of Seedborn Muse, unfortunately. And I don't think there's anything else we can do. Yeah, a little bit of a bummer on that. So, yep. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was even thinking about going for Revelation for four. And I was like, oh, if we go for the risky line of play, that is a ton of card draw. So should have gone for that. But Magic's about risk sometimes. And... Uh, I like to play a little riskier, and so unfortunately that happened, but we can bounce back pretty well. We're going to be able to get our commander back down. Um, hopefully our opponents just kind of, we've seen a ton of just rant from them, so hopefully that's just kind of uh, what they're running into. I, I will certainly take that. So let's go for Kadena. We're going to be able to pay, well, yeah, let's go and go for this Customs Depot. And see if we can't find some home goods. So we're going to go for one more, that's going to be a thousand wins. Um, I think at this point I still like Revelation and Unblinking, so I think we'll probably just get... Well, actually, Tap Creatures is going to be really good in this one. And we have the mana for it now. Since we're going to have card draw and we need Overrun to win, let's go and get rid of Revelation. Um, that might make a difference late in the game, but with us at least having two different Morph Creatures, that's two different instances where we can go for some card draw, that's two more Custom Depots, so it's almost kind of like we can replace that uh, Revelation effect by simply just casting these for one for free, then one for three colorless mana, so um, that'll pr pr be pretty good. And also with Dream Chisel, uh, that's going to give us a reduced cost too, so um, anything else is going to pass back over to our opponent. So we will end up cracking Misty Rainforest, we'll see what we're going to 
and grab off of that. Um, other than the morph creatures that we've seen, there's nothing really too crazy in here. Um, pretty much one of the ways that we are going to try to close down is just by getting a ton of card value or just using something like Overrun. We do have... Um, what is it? Triumph of the Hordes in here, which is going to give all of our creatures Infect. Um, not a huge fan of Infect and Commander, but that does allow us to close games out when we have a clunky board state with a bunch of 2-2s that are morphed down. So <laughs> it's kind of one of those. It's a um, it's not fun to lose to it, but hey, it gets the job done when you've got this just motley crew of creatures that are just 2-2 two -two little dudes or 2-2 two -two people that you're about to flip up, or, I don't know, it's just fun. So let's go to Crack Misty, and, and it still, it feels good going for that. Uh, we've got one, two, I think we're okay on, uh, let's grab a green black, so what have we already got Bayou? No, we've got a couple, a little bit more blue. Now we need to definitely grab a green source. Let's grab this breeding pool, have that come into play tap, because that allows us to go for overrun, and then I'll see what we run into for the turn. Run into Command Tower, so uh, let's go ahead and go for unblinking. I'm going to cast that face down. We're going to pay that colorless mana. Let's go ahead and uh, rummage through Home Depot's bargain bin. Uh, cultivate. Yeah, we can actually just get rid of Cultivate. I, I think that's fine. So we're going to have the Morph Creature into the battlefield. Uh, we'll go for 1,000 wins for, um, I think, only two more mana. And then hopefully we can get a few more creatures down and try to go for this uh, Stampede effect. So um, see what we run into off this card draw off of our commander. Ooh, Skin Thinner. Okay. Destroy target non-black creature. So we can't, unfortunately, we're not going to have the mana for it because it's going to be... Actually, we cast it face down. Actually, we will. Yeah, we can morph it for three. For five. And that's going to get rid of the commander. Oh, yeah, I love that. Now, we do have Customs Depot. We can pay one, and then we have not made the land drop for the turn. But I think we're just going to be okay at this particular point right now. So uh, we have the morph enter the battlefield. Let's go for command tower. It's going to allow us to cash in one more card draw. And yeah, we, we definitely want to set the clock back on our opponent. So we're going to turn it face up. That's going to destroy target non-black creature, which our opponent's commander is definitely non-black. So let's go ahead and flip this card up. I'm going to destroy Najila, and the uh, main thing is we should get that commander tax going, so that, that's going to be good for us. Uh, let's go and push him with Kadena, get on the board for three, put them down to 23. There we go, swing it for three, and then uh, anything else, pass it back over to our opponent. So uh, we do have at least three creatures on the battlefield next turn. We are looking at 1,000 wins, so that might put us in the range to where we can go for overrun, and that's what I'm hoping for. Even if our opponent does end up with this pretty aggressive board state, we still have 1,000 wins, and thankfully with our card advantage and different things like that, we're basically, and that's the cool thing about this deck, is between customs and drawing cards off free spells, you basically, you're just always going to make your land drop, so you're pretty much going to be able to really be online for a lot of these higher converted mana cost spells. So, in fact, let's go and go for a face down spell for free. Uh, we're definitely going to pay for that custom depot. Let's go and uh, tap down Soul Ring. My commentary feels like Groundhog Day right now. <laughs> like, it's just, I keep talking about Customs Depot, getting down a Morph Creature, and then going for that. So, we're going to go for one more card draw, hopefully, run into another Morph Creature. Ooh, Triumph of the Hordes. Okay. Um, so, we make the land drop for the turn. That's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That is just enough to go for Overrun and Triumph. Do we want to force the issue? Yeah, let's go for it. Because the longer we let our commander, our opponent's commander stick around, the worse and worse that board state gets for us. So, um, and we do have at least double green. So, all right, there we go. So we're going to go for overrun. It's going to give all of our creatures plus three, plus three. I'm sensing a little bit of weakness with them only having three cards in the hand and just passing the turn. So if they've got some sort of spot removal, they've got it. So we're going to grab this swamp. Uh, we're going to go for triumph of the hordes. There we go. Oh. Clicked the wrong one. We'll just go and pay two. Uh, let's go Triumph of the Hordes. It's going to be one, two. Give everybody Infect. And let's see if this is going to be good. Let's go ahead and push in. And see, this is the fun thing. You know, this is why we are running Triumph and running Overrun. Because there's just a lot of times where we end up with this kind of clunky board state where we finally get, oh, is it going to be comeuppance? No, that's a lot. What are they tapping out for? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we had to go for it. All right, so we're going to go for White Sun Zenith. That's going to be eight cat tokens on the battlefield. Oh, look at the... Oh, yeah. We got uh, surprised by cats. So, yeah, we, we had to force the issue on that one. If our opponent has an answer, they've got it. And, you know, that's... <laughs> there's there's no better way to lose the game than a bunch of cat tokens. So they're going to get a ton of Cather's Crusade triggers. Uh, let's go and yield to these impact trimmers. Always yield to that. 
Always Yield did these uh, Crusade triggers. It's gonna be oh, look at that. That is that is rough. These cat tokens are very very strong cat tokens. They're gonna be able to block uh, all of our infect creatures and still hit us on the back end. So good game to our opponent. You can see where. Um, you know, this deck is definitely capable of building a very thriving board state. You know, if our opponent doesn't have White Sun Zenith um, right then and there, then we're able to close it out with infect damage, but they did. And so we lose to Cats, and, you know, it's no pretty fun way to lose in Magic, so I will certainly take it. So they're going to be swinging with the entire Cat crew, and I'm sure Dorothy's actually silently just, like, high-fiving in our head uh, that this did happen. So there we go. Let's see what that puts us down to. Negative 50. So shout out to our opponent for closing this one out with White Sun Zenith. Um, we got a very good showing of what this deck wants to do. We're at 66 cards in our library. Opponent's at 77, so we're able to dig um, 11 cards deeper into our library. Um, like I mentioned, we're making our land drop every single turn between stuff like Custom Depot and that creature entering the battlefield. Um, this deck is just a ton of fun. There's a lot of value, and you don't really have to just put everything on some sort of morph option out of your creatures. It does help sometimes, but just being able to just kind of force an over run and a triumph and like hey do you have some removal <laughs> and like kind of put that on your opponent it's it's kind of a fun way to try to close the game out especially when you're just trying to go for some card draw so anyways if you enjoyed the video like and subscribe thanks bye